Hey there, this is Beth, and today we are talking about she or the crook. Last time we talked about he of the fiery sword, and these two are kind of a set. He is the active masculine, and she is the passive feminine. Once again, remember, no judgment calls an active, passive, they're just different. She is a receptacle. She is a receiver. She is being open to reception. And reception is something that I've been taking to heart lately and, and really figuring out how I receive. And in many ways, she is about reception and receiving things, of allowing the flow of joy and love into your life. She... She is the receptive principle. She's a receiver. She's nurturing. She's fertility. She holds all our sorrows. She holds all our joys. She holds every emotion we have ever had, and she holds them all as holy and sacred. She has no issue with you feeling shitty or angry. It's just part of the human experience, and she realizes that, and she lets that be received. She lets that be felt. She lets it go into her and she dissolves it into the greater universe. You can give her your sorrows. You can tease a line that's been haunting me this week from Lisa Gerard's The Human Game. Lend me your fears. That's what she asks. Out of your tears, lend me your fears so you can fly away. She wants you to be free. She doesn't want you to be dogged down in the shit of your life. She wants you to be open and receiving so you can re receive the divine flow of energy that is constantly coming to you, going through you. You know, it's, there's nothing stagnant in the passive and in reception. It's all just flow and it just can be this beautiful ball of wonderfulness that we freak out over and try to shut down. It's kind of interesting. You're like, no, it's going too good. I can't do that. And she's kind of that call to let it happen, let it flow. Being receiver, being passive is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we need to sit back, especially after a period of huge action, and let it process and receive the information that we're going to receive. She is a form of nurturing. She is a form of love. She is grace overflowing. She frowns that she can indicate a form of pregnancy. And remember, this pregnancy is not necessarily a literal pregnancy, although it could be. Um, it's much more of a figurative pregnancy of allowing what you need to gestate, to let things grow, and nurturing that growth so that it can have time to fully come into itself. And you're using unconditional love and giving and spiritual healing within this. You know, I think there's this idea of being passive as kind of being negative, of it not being the good way, because action is always the way to go, right? Action. And in many cases... We do need to act. Action is needed, but at the same time that if you are receiving and you said a lot of times when you, re, you know, it's like that's why these two are such a pair. <clears throat> Just a second. That's why you see, you know, it's, you know, these two work in tandem. And with she, you're the receptive aspect of it. You're bringing it in. You're filling yourself up with love and willingness to just go out there and be what you want to be. And with really with the singers, there isn't really much of a reverse because it's really, there's such huge entities that you can't really, you know, you, you flop around your head I guess you could view it as that everything's falling out. 
But it's more like you're just, you're shutting off the reception. You don't want to receive. And I think this plays in last, I talked about sitting on the couch waiting for a million dollars to fall in your lap. That's not really reception. That's just wishful thinking. Re, re, being a receiver and letting things fill, you know, because it kind of looks like she's a chalice. It kind of looks like there's a cup there almost. And I tend to often think of it as, you know, this overflowing chalice energy with yummy goodness flowing up into your life. And people who get up and really use he of the fiery sword tent, you know, good reception often comes through action. And that's why these two are kind of a duo. You know, they they don't necessarily always play alone, but they can. But at the same time, they often work extremely well together, the active and the passive, the masculine and the feminine, the doer and the receiver. They're intertwined, and we, I think we really need to heed their call and see them as an intertwined energy that through action we can be better, better receivers. Let's take an example of a small business, since I have one. If I sat around all day just thinking about, it'd be really cool to start a business. And I'd think about it some more, and then I'd think about it. I wouldn't get very far now, would I? And then and that's how we see being passive. And that's not really passive. That's, that's kind of something, it's something else. That's stagnation. That's not passivity. I don't see passive as being stagnant. Passive is kind of more active to me. Because there have definitely been times, like this month is very active for me. I'm writing class elements. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of action that I'm putting out there. But at the same time, I'm also receiving this like shitload of abundance of random acts of kindness, of wonderful things happening out there for me. But if I wasn't acting, I would not have all those wonderful things to receive. If I sat on my couch and just thought about, oh, I should start this class, I would be stagnating. I would not be receiving. And it takes both. It takes the action and the passive. And like with this, with Shea the Crook, when we start to shut her down, really, it's when you're sitting on there, sitting on that couch stagnating is where she gets shut down. It's when you just think you should be able to sit there and think, oh yes, everything will come to me. I am a receiver. I'm a receiver. But you're not out there doing. You're not out there acting. You're not out there creating those little waves that ripple through the universe that are going to ripple things back to you. And that's why it's hard to talk, you know, especially she, because the passive is so tied to the active for me. And I think we need to see it tied with action more than just, because we tend to think passive means you're just sitting there staying, growing some algae and some moss on you. And that's not necessarily true. So change that perception of passive being stagnant and see them as two different things. And remember that through action comes reception. Also, you got to be open to both. You just doing, because you can very easily just plow along with here the fiery sword and act. And it's almost kind of that smiting energy. Wow, wow, I'm doing, I'm doing. Wow, raw, I got my sword. It's fiery. Yeah. And you forget and pause a minute and go, yeah, look at all this wonderful action I'm doing. And look at all the wonderful reception that it's bringing me. Because if you just keep plowing violently forward, you miss the passive reception aspect of Shia the Kirk. And you just stay with here the fiery sword and being rah, rah, rah. Which at times, you know, you really do need to plow forward it. At the same time, if you can find there's this yummy spot with active and passive with doing and receiving. There's this yummy spot that you can find where you're doing both at the same 
time. And they're so interlinked that it's just, it's almost amazing at times. And I, I really think we need to push past seeing action as its own little category and passive as its own little category because they're not. They're like everything in this universe. They're just, they're linked. And we need to stop seeing dualities, which is hard because we're a creature of dualities. We have two parts of our brain. Get our bodies grow together. We have male and female as far as, you know, the main aspects of gender. We are creatures of duality. And we tend to see things in good and evil, good, bad, happy, sad, pretty, ugly, those kind of things. We like dualities. And that's fine. But at the same time, that does not mean we have to only work from those aspects of duality and that duality has to remain separate. I think that's kind of a misnomer, too. It's like they don't, never, two shall meet, active and passive. No, they are very much married with each other and work in tandem. And I think that is often part of like she the Keurig. It can be very tricky because it is ten can be very much a card of growing and waiting, but gestation involves some form of action, and especially when it comes to projects and things like that. And if it is an actual pregnancy, there's still changes. There's still action going within, on with inside. You just can't see it very easily. <laughs> they'll feel the cooking, they'll feel the baby, but you know, it's not right out there. But there's still change happening in there. There's still action within the passive. And finding that yummy spot where action and passive are working in tandem and get into that flow. It's it's a beautiful creature. And, you know, when you find it, it's so nice. And finding a way to live from that is harder. But, you know, it's, I think it's one of those things to strive for, finding that active and passive balance and having them doing and reception working together. And from a lot of ways, that's what She the Keurig is for me, is finding that balance of reception and learning how to receive and how to receive with joy, gratitude, and love and not in kind of a passive-aggressive way. Oh, yeah. Receive, overflow with love, joy, and unconditional wonderfulness. That's what she of the Kirk's asking of you. Okay. You all have a good day. Bye-bye.